In the house this morning, we have 15th District State Representative, Mr. Bruce Chandler. Good morning, Bruce. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah, nice to have you here, man. Thank you very much for coming in. We appreciate it. How was the drive up? It was quieter than normal. Quieter than normal, yeah. yeah. Not a lot of traffic. So you had the radio there. turned off. You weren't listening to us. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> I see how you are. No, I, I had the oil change, so I had it, it was full of oil and it wasn't quite so, <laughs> Got so, it. so much clatter going on. Gotcha. Good to know. That's the solution. Lance Tarmy, yeah. um, what do we know about Bruce yeah. Chandler? Yeah, Bruce, tell us uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I know this is what your is this your fourth your fourth run at the uh, at the office? Yeah, right. No, it's not. <laughs> Dang, I got the number on there. <laughs> okay, listen, Bruce, tell us about tell us about yourself, uh, and and tell us why you're running. Well, um, I was born in Everett, Washington, but uh, I grew up in uh, New Orleans, Louisiana. And uh, I found myself. Um, uh, that explains the beads around his yeah. neck right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is uh, uh, going to be that time of year before we know it. Yeah. But uh, I, uh, I decided to come back out here and uh, and uh, um, and try to find a career. I was kind of bouncing from one thing to another, and uh, I was uh, one of my jobs was driving a school bus in the Everett School District. And one of the other drivers talked me into meeting her cousin over in Chelan, and he was looking for somebody to learn how to farm the way he farms uh -huh. in an orchard. And uh, and I, he said, I just need to have somebody that doesn't know anything about it, and I can teach him. And I said, well, you know, I'm qualified for this job. <laughs> <laughs> it was the first job I was ever qualified for. So, his name was Joe Burnett. Uh, the Burnett family was uh, really great to us and um, uh, was there for about seven years uh, between there and uh, down along the Columbia River near Wenatchee, uh, East Wenatchee. And, um, and I, uh, I loved the, f the fruit business and it was, uh, uh, I loved the people, I loved uh, the, all of the action and uh, and there was a an ad in the classified ad in the Wenatchee World one day that uh, advertised an orchard outside uh, outside of Granger um, that was uh, uh, from the Farmers uh, Home Administration that they were putting up for for auction. So I thought, what the heck? And I um, I actually talked to my father-in-law, and he he said he'd be willing to put up a little money, and uh, uh, and and so I made a bid on it, and turned out I was the only one that bid. So I bid too much. There too you high. go. <laughs> that's, that's clearly what the answer to that one was. Anyway, I've been there for almost 35 years now. And, you know, all three of my kids grew up there. And um, Cherries? What are you, what are you growing? Pears. Specialized in pears. Pears? Yeah. Really? All right. Yeah, I drive around and look at what, uh, uh, you know, Washington Fruit's doing, what, uh, you know, everybody else, Evans, was doing and stuff, and they were all growing apples and and cherries, and so I, I try to grow what they don't. Hit them when they're not, as they say in baseball, <laughs> right? Makes sense, yeah. makes sense, all right. But, uh, and, and it's it's been uh, really great. I've been uh, associated with a lot of people. I worked for uh, the Barbie Orchards uh, in, in Buena, and uh, I was a field representative, and I was also uh, helped supervise and, and manage the, their orchards, and, it, and uh, they're a terrific family, and, and I really enjoyed doing that. But Which explains why you're on the uh, Agriculture Committee, or whatever its official name is now, right? One of your areas yes. of interest and, and expertise. Always been on it. Uh, Gary Chandler was uh, uh, one of my mentors. She, he and Barb Lisk, when I first began, and they were two of the, uh, I think, the most uh, uh, proficient and the, and the professional uh, legislators, uh, you know, that I've known, and uh, and. So I, uh, uh, I've, I, you can blame it on her. On there that. you go. Thank, <laughs> thanks, Barb. <laughs> you know, pear growing sounds a lot better than uh, banging heads in the legislature. Well, they uh, told me it was a part-time <laughs> job. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, uh, tell us, you know, why, why another run? Well, I, you know, I, I think about this, uh, you know, the preceding December. Like last December, I, I, I sat and thought about what I wanted to accomplish, the things I wanted to do, 
and uh, whether it was still, uh, you know, whether I should should plan on running again or not. Uh, I. I believe that there's still a lot to do, and uh, I spent a lot of time working on water law, on natural resource yeah. management and natural resource right. law, and uh, you know this that's a big issue for the state because uh, uh, the state has a constitutional obligation to uh, use the natural resources in, in to fund a lot of government activities and programs, and, uh, as well as to preserve the the natural environment. So. Um, it makes it really fascinating, and uh, and I think uh, I think that we've done a really great job. Uh, and I, I mean, we as a community here in the Yakima Valley, of uh, uh, really moving to the, uh, a very uh, sophisticated stage of management of the Yakima Basin, and have uh, uh, really improved the prospects for the future. And and uh, and I think that. Uh, uh, there's, there's a couple more things that uh, need to be done, including trying to figure out uh, some of the obstacles to ha restoring the fish population. Sure. There's more storage out there still on the horizon somewhere? Uh, I hope that it is, yeah. yeah. And we still push for it. But, we need more, uh, right? Uh, uh, well, w you never have too much water sure. except sure. in New Orleans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good Bing point. Bingo. <laughs> but... Uh, 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 and that, yeah, there, there were some pretty interesting hurricanes when I grew up there. I'll bet there yeah. were. I bet. And they're bet. still going. But they, uh, so I, I, I think that that's important. I, I, you know, I, I believe that uh, I got involved because I really f was so grateful to the people uh, in my community. And, uh, you know, my family's been treated extremely well. My kids loved growing up here. That's great. And, it's great uh, to hear. They still come back three or four times a year sometimes and have reunion parties, you know, with the kids they grew up with. Hey, we grow, we we make great beer here. There's a reason to come back. <laughs> you know, come on. Oh, I think it's more than just the okay, beer. Okay, I just joking. Yeah. A little more. Although I the, hope so. The beer is the, the beer is is tops. And uh, I don't know. I I tell you one story that I, uh, my uh, my uh, grandparents, my father's parents. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, my grandmother, when she was growing up, was growing up in Snohomish County, and uh, she and her brothers and sisters would uh, uh, bring a, a big tent over here, and they would uh, they would go to Carpenters o over by Granger and Zilla, and uh, and they would pick, they would plant hops and they would string hops. They did at those days they did it around tree trunks. Mm. And, oh, well. uh, and then they and they helped harvest them, and uh, and then they would go back and. My dad um, left behind when uh, uh, when he passed away a, a, a trunk full of um, uh, of letters between my grandmother and my grandfather, who at that time was working a, as a uh, business manager of the uh, of a lumber mill in Gra in Granite Falls, and so they would write each other like three or four times a week. Oh, that's cool. And uh, this was like uh, around 1910. <laughs> Wow, that's and, pretty neat. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's it amazes me that I ended up being, uh, you know, right in the same neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, uh, Bruce, uh, we're gonna call you that rather than represent because we know you, kind of we know you, uh, Bruce. Don't uh, they always say uh, the uh, honorable? Uh, the honor. Do, do you have to say the honorable? The honorable. It, uh, uh, you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, agriculture hit hard by COVID. Uh, COVID. Uh, um, how do you think the state has handled the COVID situation, especially, you know, with our unique situation here in Yakima in, in, in agriculture? Uh, have we, have we, has the state handled it correctly? Do you think some things need to change? Give us your feeling on COVID. I believe that there have been some mistakes made and, and actually, you know, it's hard to be perfect. So, but I, um, uh, I think that there's, uh, uh, the timing was was really extraordinary. I mean, we were just uh, getting to the completion of building uh, housing for H-2A workers, and that was done to federal and state requirements, which were found to be inadequate against the pandemic. Mm. And uh, and mm. so because they used bunk beds and you know they didn't build them big enough sp floor space and stuff. For for the uh, 
social distancing. distancing. But yeah. but it was, uh, and uh, and I think the the state uh, could have been more helpful with uh, trying to f forge a way forward, rather than just saying, well, you you go figure it out, and then they come back and inspect it and say, no, this isn't good enough. And every industry has been like that. We've been working with a lot of, uh, a lot with wineries, the local wineries here who, you know, uh, it wasn't that long ago that they said that, uh, the, the state said the bars could open up in Yakima. Right. But the, the Winery. wineries couldn't. The wineries couldn't because they aren't bars. But they both serve food. They both uh, yeah. have yeah. outdoor space. Uh, it was, uh, it, it, they never could, they never wanted to bother, be, you know, uh, uh, forced to, to really explain their, their the distinction, explaining their, the, uh, the reason they did that. There's been a lot of that with a lot of industries. Are um, you hearing people? Are you hearing people's frustrations yes. with the masks, or or are they supportive of, of, of all these these requirements? You know, in the Lower Valley. Uh, well, I th I think. Uh, um, it's pretty much the same all over Eastern Washington, and I, and and no nobody's happy. But it's <laughs> like the world came to an end. Yeah, you know, for for yeah. six months. Yeah, and uh, and so it's. Um, I think people are still struggling with that. Uh, yeah, I I have. Uh, what's what's been interesting to me is the number of people. That the biggest thing is that they, they you know for six months they couldn't go to the coffee shop and sit down with their friends. And they couldn't, they had, they really, it was a lot of effort and a lot of planning to be able to just to stand and have a conversation for a few minutes. You know, you as a lawmaker and other Republican lawmakers, did you find that you just didn't have any power to really change anything, even though you were hearing all this frustration uh, from people in your community that, uh, you know, w whether it was masking or whether it was, you know, closing of businesses, did... Uh, did you find yourself helpless, pretty much? Uh, well, I try never to be helpless. I mean, there's no point in being there if you really. Have well, that was that was my that was my term, and I apologize for that. Right. But, but I yeah. I, uh, I do. It was it was a, f a bit frustrating sometimes. Yeah. That uh, frustrated uh, maybe maybe it's a better word. The, yeah. the governor and and, uh, uh, and the agencies were not interested in talking about it, and um, and they. Uh, um, you know, I think that uh, the the governor likes to make uh, you know keep repeating the fact that it's all about science. Uh, most of the decisions, uh, nobody could find any science. No, that's it. for sure. And, Very confusing. And sometimes. it would vary from community to community. It would vary from from one side of the state to the other. It would vary, uh, uh, you know, just uh, from one person to another. And 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 I think it was. Um, uh, I still would like to hear the explanation of why it was okay to uh, to have Walmart and Costco open, but every local store in the Lower Valley had to be closed yeah. for almost a year. We'll ponder that. Take a break for news. Be back for another half hour with Bruce Chandler. Thank you. The morning news launches <laughs> the second half hour of the second hour of the 22nd of I'm out of seconds. Wow, that's good. That's stormy. It's 27 degrees, too. I mean, so you, there, you were close. You could have faked you know it. You could have gone with 22 <laughs> just for, for the sake of continuity. Would, would that have killed you? Come on. Oh, man. We're talking with 15th District State Representative Position 1 incumbent Bruce Chandler. Been at this uh, game for a while, and we are talking in the last half hour a little bit about uh, Bruce's uh, farming roots. And, of course, he's on the Ag Committee and has always been helping to uh, represent uh, on the Eastern Washington and the Valley's behalf. Lots of other issues to get into. Um, we we were talking just briefly about uh, the makeup of the legislature and uh, the shifting demographics and, and, and where Republicans can be found on the other side. And then up came off mic the conversation about uh, CHOP and uh, riots and defund the police and all of that. Um, how do you think that the, that has affected our state and will possibly could affect the legislature? Well, I think that it's, it's caused some anxiety. Uh, uh, in, uh, it's, well, more in the west side than here. Sure. But, uh, but I think the fact that... Uh, um, that local governments would stand by and not not respond to the situation 
was uh, was pretty sobering to a, a lot of constituents around here. I mean, that's I got a lot of comments about that. Um, I don't think that myself. I don't think it's spreading. I don't. I, I don't think that uh, uh, most communities are are going to uh, uh, to you know face that challenge because I I think most people understand that we have to uh, provide for public safety and you do that with a police force that that's trained and professional and um, and I think that. Uh, uh, you know, this is part of kind of a national strategy that has more to do with the election mm -hmm. than um, than with. Thank you. Yeah, that, but it does with uh, 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 you know uh, a lot of other tangential issues that, that uh, uh, it, and I and I, I think it's actually set their agenda back uh, as well as uh, as causing uh, uh, some concern and anxiety among constituents. Sure. I can I can believe that um, tax 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 we're, mm -hmm. we're you know the revenue forecast shows that we're back <coughs> not maybe as far back uh, from uh, projections as as we thought and there'll be another one coming out but uh, uh, some of your fellow lawmakers uh, have already appeared here and said uh, we don't support any more taxes there are some areas that we should look at in the budget and that's one of the reasons we should have had a special session to sort of get ahead of the budget process you're an appropriations guy what do you what do you think we should do and what do you think might happen given our economic circumstance well i do think that we it was a real missed opportunity not to uh, have a special session earlier uh you know time is used to apply pressure and that you know it's going to be more difficult to do it uh, in, in uh, january than than it needs to be. Sure. I, I do believe that um, the uh, uh, the the increasing taxes is not going to do anything to help build the re restore the economy, and um, and that has really been the the biggest casualty. I mean, I keep trying to get uh, um, uh, some of the uh, uh, the executive branch. Uh, agencies to try and, and do a more systematic analysis of, of how many businesses have we really lost because I don't think uh, people realize uh, as I travel around um, you know there are a lot of small towns that they don't have a light on <laughs> right anywhere and uh, they, they just aren't even functioning as as, as towns anymore and uh, and that uh, you know th this was all happened at a time when our economy was almost at the peak that it, highest peak it had ever been uh, I, I and I, I think that uh, restoring uh, prosperity is going to have much more to do with restoring communities and local businesses than it does with uh, uh, you know just adding to government better to rebuild uh, than try to squeeze out what's left of those that are still going right yeah maybe suspend uh, put a put a two-year delay on some programs, depending on what they are, whatever. But to allow us to get our feet back under ourselves, because that's what created the prosperity that we were enjoying. That's right. right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was. And uh, um, the, there is, uh, I think, uh, more new members after the last election than usual. And it was kind of a, you know once or twice a decade. <laughs> there's kind of a generational s transition. Um, but uh, um, and I think that uh, uh, they have the feeling that you know it's, uh, government needs to provide more services, which uh, there are cases where that's true, but it also it doesn't address the fact that there are services that government <laughs> you know provides that aren't necessarily uh, what what constituents need or right. what they or delivered in the most cost effective way right. or yeah. yeah you can make a pretty good laundry list of uh, why government might not be the best uh, delivery for that so um you you expect then looking ahead that uh, there'll be despite the the burden on businesses that are still going that there'll be different kinds of taxes have you you've got any sense that that's coming or not yet um, because if uh, uh, if there are more Democrats elected than uh, in the last election, 
and, and that would be that would mean that there would be fewer Republicans. But those Democrats will be coming into office for the first time, not wanting to um, upset or anger their constituents. They're, they're still dealing with people that are feeling the impact, right? Yeah. yeah, and 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 they're people that are willing to vote not by party, you know, that will vote for either party. So uh, I think they're going to want to get off on the right foot, and I think they're going to hmm. be a little more circumspect. Let's hmm. hope. Then uh, um, uh, if they aren't, then I believe that, you know, the next election you could see a real change. See a tur turn out of those guys. Interesting. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, very interesting. Uh, education funding, while we're talking about the state budget, do you see, uh, I know that you were all through there through the McCleary decision, so you see an increase in, in education funding. Is that something you think is needed? Um, I, well, I think that we've been fully funding education. I, I think that um, uh, the thing about, uh, one, one of the things that affects it that we don't pay m enough attention to, I don't think, is that uh, as people shift, you know, they, they change jobs and different things, and they, they move from, it's very easy to move from one school district to another, especially in Puget Central, Puget Sound. I mean, you could just walk two or three blocks and you're in a different city, much less a right. different uh, school district. And, um, and so there are some costs that become associated with ha expanding classes you know the enrollment and then having contracting enrollment and um, and I think that that's uh, one of the things we're going to have to be prepared to deal with uh, even as we reopen s schools because it's um, I think parents don't really know any more than I, I know uh, uh, is whether it's better to be in class or remote you know that that's going to be the big frustration I think is if we can't come to a, a reasonable agreement in a reasonable amount of time over how we're going to provide uh, education. Uh, That's really going to impact funding, though, right? I mean, if you don't have kids in classrooms. Well, uh, I think it will impact. Yeah. Them. Yes. And, yeah. Uh, um, uh, but I, uh, um, I do think we have, uh, provided that we don't have any un unintended uh, backsliding on the uh, coronavirus mm -hmm. situation and we continue to make progress on that I think that the our economy is still essentially intact that's and, good to hear and uh, uh, I think that uh, um, we may be called upon to do some things to help people restore you know get back into their business but I think that that would uh, I think that it, without a, a healthy economy uh, people are going to be surprised at how little government can mm -hmm. do. KIT News Time is 7.52. We're talking to 15th District State Representative Incumbent, Position 1, Bruce Chandler. Bruce, you got kids? Yes, I have three three kids, and they have kids. And they have kids? Yes. Do you, do you, will... Uh, they won't call on so you. They call you the honorable what? grandpa. The, 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 the honor. <laughs> Not the honorable. <laughs> yeah, don't go quite that far. But uh, I do have great kids, and it's the most exciting thing I've ever experienced to see them with their kids. It's just unbelievable. I, I, I ask that uh, because uh, of the sex ed bill that's out. Yes. And it, when your kids were younger, uh, what you know about the sex ed bill? Um, uh, would it sat okay with you if you were younger? If you were younger and you, your kids were younger and you had to, and you had to send them to school uh, with this new sex ed bill, referendum ninety, of course, on the on the ballot now to reject it. But where do you sit on the sex ed bill? How do you feel about referendum ninety? I believe that uh, I believe in families, and that's one reason I live here, because Central Washington people believe in families and that's why they live here um, and uh, and I believe that uh, uh, you know we shouldn't uh, I mean why we can't teach other subjects we can't teach writing <laughs> and, and, and reading and things but we can teach uh, sex education and I you know I think that that's uh, um, n nowhere can I interpret the constitutional mandate for providing education 
in a manner that encompasses that. Yeah, see, but, I, I McCleary, which mandated a change in everything, yeah. didn't say, oh, and by the way, yeah. you're going to need to do the sex ed thing, too. The yeah. interpretation of the Constitution at that time did not include that. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and I, I don't think, uh, I don't think uh, my constituents trust it, trust the state, or, you know, because we do have a statewide education system, which is different than most states, really. Um, and uh, and so there is a larger state role, and 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 I think that they're um, they're waiting to see if if um, that's more important than teaching kids how to read and do math and science. So, do you support referendum ninety, or I should say, to reject the sex yes, ed bill? Yes. Yeah, I voted uh, twice to reject reject it, it. during session. It's uh, certainly a lot of controversial subjects out there for a lot, of, for a lot of a lot of parents. But uh, you know, there's other parents that uh, that certainly uh, uh, are, are backing that. That's right. You know, Bruce, when yeah. you um, when you think about uh, heading back to Olympia, um, only to turn around and come back home for a Zoom session. You, you were, there was a, a practice run the other day. How did yeah. that go? And what do you think the uh, prospects of uh, of uh, you know distance legislating uh what the chances of that are um it was uh, a lot farther from perfection than i had hoped <laughs> i think that was true for all of us that were on it, it um it's um i i believe and i bl and, and I, I i know that almost all of the republican caucus in the house believes that you know one of the most important aspects of preserving the integrity and the public support of the legislature is that it, it involves legislators looking each other in the eye and standing in the same room when they cast their vote. Sure. That it's a public act, that it's an act that's, that, that uh, has been, you know, all the debate, all, all of the legislative process needs to be public. And I think, I think most people, um, that's kind of their uh, the first r rule for them and uh, you know they would love to think negatively about government we have to not uh, give them any opportunity the reason to, to. well look all the bad behavior we see happen on the screen now when you're not facing people right yes. uh, the the the, <laughs> the the distance and and uh, the protection of the glass screen where you can say whatever you want without right. scorn or a uh, raised eyebrow or a threatened punch out, what, you know, whatever it happens to be. Uh, there, there is a, uh, mm -hmm. a social pressure about standing up in front of your fellow legislators and taking your stand and being heard and backing it up. So um, hopefully that won't come to that, but it looks like maybe it already is headed that way. Well, uh, I'm not sure exactly how it's going to ha happen. I mean, the, the first run through was, uh, was pretty rough. And I think that um, you know there may be some some situation or circumstance someday that we're, we might have to do it once. But I I think that people um, one of the things is that you don't if you if you're not in the same room together. Uh, my experience there so far has been that you don't have the kind of discussion and uh, and and the opportunity for negotiation and for. Uh, uh, you know, actually, what they call perfecting a bill, right? Which is exactly what you what happens here. That is not. It, it, it's uh, it's not going to be amenable to the uh, technology. I just had a news flash, <laughs> and all of the uh, recent legislative sessions, when these n no content bills show up. That's just going to look like a break, blank screen on your computer. <laughs> it's like, is my computer down? Is it not yeah, working? Right. Oh, no, it's just one of those bills that we're submitting without any detail on it. Yeah. Wow. Well, um, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting, that's for sure. And you'll know in uh, less than two weeks if uh, you get to do it all again. So uh, remind the folks in the 15th District why weighing all of the variables that they should send uh, Bruce back once again. Make your make your pitch. Here you go. Well, I I think w I appreciate that uh, people have put their trust in uh, in in me for uh, over the last few years, and I and I really 
uh, treasure being able to repay all of the wonderful things that people have done for me and my family and uh, allowing me to be in the community and, uh, and, and be a part of it. And, and I, uh, I am proud uh, to represent Central Washington. I think, I think the Yakima Valley is the, uh, the heart and soul of, of the Pacific Northwest. And uh, I want to do everything I can to try and help it be better. And, uh, and I think that all of my neighbors want it to be better, the best it can be. And, and, uh, and so I, uh, I just, I, I find, I, I'm very grateful for it and, and I appreciate people's patience and, uh, uh, and I appreciate uh, their, their trust in me. I take it very seriously.